because you mentioned AI, is there hope that AI might be able to help find some interesting insights? I mean, another question, another way to ask this question is, how special are humans that we're able to discover novel insights about the world? That's a great question. Um, and it depends on what kind of insights and what we're going to find that out. I mean, you know, it's because it's hard to think about something that doesn't quite exist yet. I mean, I could just think about something, take a step back. You know, it's a little bit like to understand three, four dimensions. You go back to three dimensions, you know, so to go to something you can imagine. So you can sort of say a lot of the things in a very different level about the internet. You can say, you know, has the internet helped? do things and that's mm -hmm. you know it definitely took on a life of its own in some sense but it's also something that we're able to tame you know i know that i myself wouldn't have been able to write books if the internet didn't exist because i wouldn't have had the time to go to the library and look everything up and um it helped me enormously and in some sense ai could be that in a very nice world it could be a tool that helps us go a step further or than we would and a lot more efficiently and it's already done that to some extent. Or it could be like the parts of the internet that we can't control, that are ruining politics or whatever. So, And there's certainly a lot of indications it can do that. Then there are even bigger things that you know people speculate about, about AI being able to do its own things. But in terms of actually figuring things out, um, you know, we're in the early stages. Yeah, there's several directions here. One is like on the theorem prover side, so Wolfram Alpha, where everything is much more precise. And when you have large language model type of stuff, th one of the limitations of those is it seems to come up with convincing looking things, mm -hmm. which we don't know if it's true or not. Right. And that's a big problem for physics. <laughs> so large language models are more or less like generalizations of stuff that we have. So the question is, so there's still breakthroughs in AI waiting to happen, and maybe they are happening, and maybe they'll be good, maybe not, but th that's not quite the same. I mean, maybe to some in some cases, it's just pattern recognition that leads to important things, but sometimes it could be something more insightful than that that I can't even put my finger on. So it forces us to, I mean, we don't really understand how smart we are. We don't understand how we think about things all that well, actually. But one thing is true, though, we're a lot more efficient right now than computers and coming up with things. We require a lot less energy to do that. So if computers figure out how to do that, then it's going to be a, a totally different ball game. So And so there are clearly kinds of connections that we don't know how we're making, but we are making them. And so that's going to be interesting. So, um, you know, I say we're in early stages, but this is changing very rapidly. But right now, I don't think that it's actually, you know, we discovered like new laws of physics, but could it in the future? Maybe it can. It will raise big questions about what is special about humans that we don't quite appreciate. You know, with, there could be things that are like that leap of insight that happens, truly novel ideas. That could potentially be very difficult to do. So there are sort of abstract questions like that. There's also questions of how is it that we can address to some extent, you know, how will AI be used in the context of the world we live in, sure. which is based on, you know, at least our country is based on capitalism and a certain political system, and how will global politics deal with it? How will our capitalist system deal with it? What will be the things that we focus on doing with it? Mm -hmm. How much will researchers get control of it um, to be able to ask different sorts of questions? I mean, you know, while it was starting out, people were doing these kind of toy problems, but what will it actually be applied to and what will it be optimized to do? There's, there's a lot of questions out there that it's really important we start addressing. Uh, what to you is the most beautiful unsolved problem in physics and cosmology? What to you is really exciting if we can unlock the mystery of in the next few decades? Um, so is it, what's the most beautiful unsolved problem or what is the most beautiful unsolved problem I think we can make progress on? <laughs> oh boy. I we mean, make look, progress the, on in the next few centuries. <laughs> there's, you know, there's most of the questions 
the big questions have to do with what underlies things, how things started, what's at the base of it. There's also just basic questions like how like, that you asked earlier, how far will science take us? Mm -hmm. How much can we understand? Um, there are questions like how we got here, um, what underlies it, are there, you know, but also, I mean, there's really deep questions like, you know, what fraction of, are we actually seeing? Are, if there are these other forces, if there is another way of seeing the world, is, are there galic, you know, universes beyond our own? That if they're so totally different, how do we even comprehend them? I mean, how do we detect? Like, what would we even think about them? So there's a lot about trying to get beyond. It's always just getting beyond our limited vision and limited experience and trying to see what underlies it, both at small scales and at large scales. We just don't know the answers. I mean, I'd like to think that we understand more about dark matter, about dark energy, about are there extra dimensions, things that we actually work on. But there's probably a lot beyond what we work on that's yet to be discovered. Yeah, understanding the extra dimensions piece will be really interesting. Totally. I mean, if it is, you know, how the universe went from higher dimensions to what we see, it, or do the, you know, are the extra dimensions present everywhere? I mean... You know, one of the really interesting pieces of physics we did that I talk about in my first book, War Passages, is finding out that there can be a higher dimension, but only locally do you think there's a gravity of a lower dimension. So it could be like only locally do we think we live in three dimensions. It could be higher dimensions. It's different. It's not actually the gravity we have, but it, there's all sorts of phenomena that might be out there that we don't know about. All sorts of evolution things, time dependence that we don't know about. Um and of course, that's from the point of view of particle physics. From the point of view of other kinds of physics, we're just beginning, so who knows? Yeah, if the physics changes throughout, is, is not homogeneous throughout the universe, that's, that would be weird. I mean, you know, for the observable universe, it's the same, but beyond the observable universe, who knows?